Hey everybody, welcome to the Pixel Bliss Podcast. Andy, Dave. Uh, so, once again, we're doing a surprise. I don't know the topic yet, although I kind of do. Yeah, yeah, but, I kind of do. So, Dave, what are you going to play this week? This week? Um, well, because I borrowed, between this game and the last game, I borrowed Dragon Quest Eight from you. Oh. Um, uh, I've been playing <laughs> Dragon Quest Eight. Um, I, I had to restart, so I really haven't gotten that far. I only got to the part where um, you pick up the girl. And you, okay, yeah, you yeah. like get on the boat, and, and that's about where I'm at. Like, like the, the, the the game opens up. That's something I like about Dragon Quest is mm-hmm. that it's the world is so big and it's so quintessentially JRPG. Yeah, yeah, it, it's it's like it's a super grind fest. Like yeah. you you go in and it's like okay, uh, the quest to go kill the is it the genie or whatever. It's a there's I forget it. I don't know if he's like technically a genie or a demon or whatever. But in the waterfall, mm-hmm. like that first cave where you have to like go in there and kill him, he's gonna. Stomp you, and then you have to run all the way back. Yep, and then grind your way back up. You know, grind it a couple more levels. Night doesn't fall. Once night falls, you're screwed. The monsters will just eat your face, and yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's a lot of fun. I mean, like the, a good example of why I like Dragon Quest Eight so much is I always think back. There's one because you go to these different mm-hmm. areas, different islands, different kingdoms, mm-hmm. and you kind of solve their problems, which is kind of pretty much what always that's that's kind of like Dragon Quest Dragon Warrior has always been about. That's, that's even kind of like what a lot of RPGs are, right? Yeah. It's like, oh, okay, well, we have we have to go collect all these MacGuffins, and There's, in order to get the MacGuffin in this town, you have to, like, fix the rat problem, or you yes. have to get rid of the witch, or you have to, you know, stop the boulders from falling down yeah. the mountains or something. Like, Dragon Quest Eight was a breath of fresh air, because at the time that it came out, mm-hmm. you know, PS2 had kind of gotten away from that way of doing things. Yeah. Definitely the later PS1 days, and then mm-hmm. into the PS2 era, yeah, yeah. you know, JRPGs were like, okay... Four hours in, you immediately know like what the world-ending calamity is going to be and how you guys yeah. have to fight it. Dragon Quest games are just never like that. They're always like, go here, go here, go here, go here. Yeah. And 20 hours in, that's when the main, I mean, with, air with, quotes, main story kind of starts evolving out of it. With, with Dragon Quest, I mean, you kind of... I've never played 8 all the way through, so I'm not really sure, but you kind of have this idea of like... You know, hopefully I'm not mixing all this crap up. Um, with other games, but there's like this one bad guy that, like, at the very yes. beginning of the game, he like something with thorns in the castle, correct? Yes, the evil clown that stops time. Yeah, and curses the king. Yeah, so you have to like stop him. Yes, and that's I feel like that's the overarching story, but it is and it isn't. So, so he has a boss. Everybody's got a boss. No, he doesn't have a boss. No, I don't think he has a boss. It's been a while. I'm pretty sure he's the he turns himself into the big evil. He is the big baddie. But the actual story of Dragon Quest is not really about that. It, yeah. It's actually kind of sweet the way it happens. Okay. Well, I'll, I'll continue to play on it. Yes. Um, get some PS2 time in. You know, the same way that like Grand Theft Auto mm-hmm. is like a, a, an immersive world, Dragon Quest is an immersive world. Yeah. Just differently. Yeah. It's really easy to kind of slip into that silent protagonist off to save the world mm-hmm. mode. Who looks suspiciously like Goku. <laughs> They all look and, like Goku. Yeah, well, Toriyama. not the fat guy. <laughs> fat guy, Yangus. Yeah, love Yangus. Yeah, the, and the voice work is really good on yep. all the characters so far. Um, well, that's mostly thanks to Square. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, Enix I mean, had never really done that type of stuff with Dragon Quest at that point. Yeah, Square bought them, and they were like, "Okay, first thing off the bat, we're doing a new Dragon Quest, and you guys are gonna." It's gonna us. be for Western audience as well for like the mm-hmm. first time in years. And, yeah. We're actually going to release it over there, so yeah. So, but that's that's I mean, that's kind of what I've been up to because I you know have a lot of time in the mornings before I have to go yeah. to work. So uh, I mean, you know, keep keep in mind that like that came out the same time as Final Fantasy Twelve, which mm-hmm. how different is Final Fantasy Twelve compared to yeah Dragon Quest Eight? And Dragon Quest Eight is really just like Dragon Quest has been Dragon Quest since one. Mm-hmm. We've just steadily been tweaking the formula instead of like. What uh? What they do with Final Fantasy? Where yeah, they just the change baby, it up? Yeah, throw the baby out with the bathwater. Like, Everything's changed. Have fun. Yeah, that's really one of the best. I really love it. Yeah, I've been. I I, I kind of want to get my own copy of it, just so that it's I'm not happy. expensive. It was very popular. And well, I don't know. The last time I saw a copy of Dragon Quest Eight, I think it was like twenty or twenty five bucks. Well, yeah. that's not a lot. That's it's just still more. I, I wish, I wish that was one of the games that Sony would re-release on the PSN. That's squ- up to Square, not to Sony. Well. That Square would allow Sony to put on the PS Now. Like, there's a lot of times people are like, like bad mouthing. They're like, "Why isn't, um, you know, Star Ocean Second Departure or First Evolution on?" Yeah, yeah. On, and and it's, like, it's, well, the, it's up to the developers or the publishers like, to allow to that. Square. It's not like, I'm sure there's no one at Sony going, "No, you cannot put games on my system." 
so that they're easily available for people and we can make and money. We, and we can make money without having any sort of like, yeah. you know, we don't have to carry stock of the I, game. I imagine Star Ocean has to be, you know, Q&A and Square's just like, eh. Yeah, they don't want to Q&A it. I mean, keep in mind, I always view Square as kind of like Disney. Mm -hmm. You know how Disney always kind of holds on to their Disney movies and then releases them out of the vault? Just whenever they feel like it, yeah. Yeah, whenever there's like an anniversary or something. Mm -hmm. I always view Square as like holding on to their stuff and then right. like, oh, so we can now re-release it mm -hmm. sometime. Yeah, yeah, that's, uh, sadly, that's, I think, how Square's going to do things. Um, even though they had that Final Fantasy sale last month? They had one in August sometime. Yeah, they, yeah. Usually have, they usually have them on sale, but it's not usually... It's not a whole bunch of new games. They don't, like, release games. And I, and I really wish they would do, like, a big square sale. And it's like, oh, hey, and if you buy three games, you get a copy. You, you can have the privilege of buying this game. Remember, uh, we're getting off, a little bit off topic, but remember uh, the Summer of Adventure with Square Enix? Or with Square's yeah. at that time. Was it yeah, yeah. And it was basically between June, or between May and August, mm -hmm. it released Tales of Destiny. Mm-hmm. Not Tales of Destiny. Um, Threads of Fate. Yeah. Threads of Fate. Legend of Mana. Yeah. Something else that I can't remember. And then it wound up with Final Fantasy IX. So they had all, all, of these, bought, all these RPGs. Yeah. Came out if you bought all of them, you got like a special backpack or something. Yeah. But you had to buy them through their distributor or whatever. Or, what, you just cut the UPC off the back and send it in or something like that? The UPC off the back. Or so I think it was like... It's like the, cereal. Through, I think it was like through stores. Like, you had to pre-order them at stores. And yeah. Stuff. Like, just take a moment and realize there was a time... And also, Legend of Dra Dragoon came out that summer. Mm -hmm. Tales of Destiny 2 came out that summer. Yeah. Like, there was a time... Oh! Um, remember it? You had it? I had it. Vagrant Saga. Yeah. Okay. Vagrant, Vagrant Story. Vagrant Story came out that summer. So there was a time when there was a summer where, like, there were enough RPGs coming out that one developer was releasing enough of them to do a special promo. Like, how often, like, we're, like, That's... scraping for our JRPGs now. Like, Tales of Zillion yeah. 2 is a big story. Yeah. It's like, how, when was the last time we had a JRPG come out? Well, it was last year when Tales of Zillia came out. Yeah, yeah, I know. Or Nino Kuni came out. You yeah. Know? It doesn't seem like that's, that's... It seems like the Western audience is getting as from from an like an industry wide standpoint and then the way that the publishers are looking at it, they look at the games that sell well here and they're not necessarily JRPGs. Yeah. But at the same time you also have uh, publishers like Exceed Access mm -hmm. and Atlas. Yeah. They're like, okay, this game's already made over here. It's already made its money. How much do we need to buy, to spend to bring that over here, localize it, and then yeah. like do a small release or do a digital digital release. Yeah. And that's and that's kind of what I'm thinking like these JRPGs are gonna wind up doing is you may not be able to buy a physical version of a lot of them anymore because it's just cheaper and it is feasible for them to be like, all right, we're gonna put this on the PS4, it's gonna be like twenty bucks or twenty five bucks or something, but it's only gonna be digital. Mm -hmm. And that kind of sucks, but you know, it's either do you want it at all or do you not want it over here like at all. So having said this they are releasing a new strategy JRPG for the PS3, PS4, and Vita at some point this fall. Natural Selection. It's a strategy RPG? Yeah, the PS4 version of it looks awesome. Like, it looks like, because it's a strategy RPG, so it looks like you're looking at a tabletop and the actual figures come to life. Because, like, the oh, resolution is oh, that good. I'm thinking, there's, a, there's another game. There's a PC game called Natural Selection. Oh. And it's like, a, I think it was like a Half-Life 2 mod. Maybe it's not natural. Maybe it's natural doctrine. I don't know. Natural selection. I, the one I know of is like it's kind of like that evolve game uh -huh. where you know you have like one or two guys playing monsters and you have a whole. Maybe bunch it's of natural them. doctrine. It's it it's done by game. it was originally developed by Kid Kalana Games, or the company that also made Reckless Lotus Wars. Yeah, there's yeah. also an anime to go around along with it. Okay, well then, yeah. That, that makes so, what is your topic? Um, so this show is going to land on or around nine nine, correct? Yes. So what came out on a nine nine ninety nine? Uh, the Sega Dreamcast. Yes, it did. And you were my friend with the Sega Dreamcast. I had a Sega Dreamcast back in the day, and I did not. I played his Sega Dreamcast, and it was fun. Oh, like it was awesome. I mean, so I, it was. It was like it's kind of like the Nintendo system out of the the current generation, right? It came okay. out before the PS2 and the Xbox. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it didn't sell very well. <laughs> um, 
and, and and so I hope I hope history does not repeat itself and then Nintendo goes away this time. But um, as a hardware developer, but that's probably not going to happen. Um, but like the Dreamcast was one of those it was one of the systems that we got mostly because like all of us have been really good for the summer and mm-hmm. we all done really good last year in school. So my my stepdad and mom were like, okay, there was like a bundle that came with you know Sonic the Hedgehog or Sonic Adventure. Um, it had like a big demo disc and a second controller and it had like a VMU in it. Mm. And it was just a little bit, it was only like 60 bucks more than what buying a Dreamcast mm-hmm. would have been. Um, so we we got this bundle and I, I want to say this probably, we didn't get it released, we got it around that Christmas time mm-hmm. after release. Uh, but God, those games, that I mean for, for a system that... You know, it's right when you're coming from like the PS1 to the Dreamcast. It was it was a big it was, a, it was a giant leap of uh, infidelity. Even though you were still looking at a, you know, 480i picture. Mm-hmm. Like they just the the speed at which they were rendering things in the Sonic games was just astounding. Yeah. Me. Like it, you know the the 14 year old me or 16 year old me was like, holy crap, this is the best console ever. And I'm, you know, I, I just. The only real thing that bothered me about the Dreamcast, the controller anyway, was the cord came out the bottom. Yeah, so you had to, <laughs> so, so you had to like it had that little clip on it so that you can make the cord go up the, the way, but it had the spots for the BMU, so I kind of see how like that's why yeah. that happened. Um, so very annoying. Yes, but I do remember like, you know, the VMU was like it was like a tiny little Game Boy. Yes, because it had a D-pad and two buttons and a start button or it something. It was like a Tamagotchi and a Game Boy had a baby. Yes, and you know there were um, like in the Sonic game in particular, there were like little chows, and it, that was exactly what they were. They were like it was like a Tamagotchi, yeah. and you would take it with you, and and you could do stuff with it while you were out, and then you could do like chow races or something, yeah. and it was like a uh, Skies of Arcadia. Mm-hmm. I w- I would actually like because I just played it last summer, the summer yeah. before, beat it. But I basically go to work and on my lunch hour just pull the BMU out and be like, okay, we're gonna do this little thing so I can get you know free healing potions and stuff. Yeah, yeah, and, and it, it had a very small bearing on the actual game, but you could still feel like you were making progress on a game. Yeah. Back in the day, still and very it was cool. And it was one of the first systems that had a modem in it. Like yeah. it, you could, it, it it featured online play. Now, granted, it was a fifty six k modem. It wasn't like it didn't have a network card, right? Like because the the PS. Twos had that add-on that they gave. They yes. gave us a way and later. There was, there was a network card that you could a uh, uh, a broadband add-on. Yeah, you would you would just like pull the the modem out and then plug the, the network yes. card in. Um, and we never got that. Uh, <laughs> sadly, we never got that. We also didn't have broadband at the time. We so also did not have broadband. Really yeah, um, but I mean, even when even once broadband became a thing, and I had it at my dad's house, it wasn't. Uh, by that point, the dream. By, by, by that was point, the dream. Nobody was making games for the Dreamcast anymore, but. Although people still make games for the Dreamcast to this day. Uh, what is that game, Ken, that's coming out that you bought? Pure Solar? Yeah. yeah. Does that come out yet? No. The problem is they, they, they have them all. They don't want to release the Dreamcast ones until they can also release the codes for the Xbox One, PS Vita, PS, all the other, all the other ones. systems. So they want to release it all at once. So basically they're saving on the Dreamcast cases. They're like, sorry, guys. If you bought the Dreamcast game, you should totally get your... your but they want to release it all at once. So because other people didn't have like, Dreamcast game, they bought the PS3 like version. They don't have confidence in their product, and they think that people who have purchased it, who bought it for the Dreamcast, are going to get it first, and then it's going to get like shitty review scores, and and the Metacritic's going to drop on it. It feels like that's I mean, what it feels people, like to me. Okay, for instance, but that's just me as, being cynical. As a, for instance. <laughs> Even if that happened, the people that bought the PS3 they're, they're gonna get it. They're are, just are, have already paid for it. Yeah, they're already getting it from Kickstarter. So yeah, I think it's more of a we want to release. It we want to release it to everybody at once. We don't want to give anybody an unfair advantage. But I mean, you paid a premium. Although it's not a it's multi-player. Player. Well, yeah, I'm not saying like whatever. Anyway, so yeah, you know, and, and you know, if if you look at the games that came out for the Dreamcast mm-hmm. and that also came out on other systems, like that uh, Ready to Rumble boxing game. Yeah, they ran better on the Dreamcast. It ran spectacularly on the Dreamcast. The the N sixty four version was pretty abysmal, and yes. the PS was it PS one or PS two that got that game? I think it was a PS one that got that game, and it was the PS one version. Jake. Yeah, the PS one version was was pretty bad. So, but I mean, you have to consider that it was a at that point, the first next-gen system for the PS2, GameCube, 
and Xbox One era. Yeah. Um, Man, I loved it. It was a good but, system. But I my, love that system. A very good memory of that I have is we're over at your house. You had just gotten your PlayStation 2. We're playing SSX. Or, no, you were asleep. I was. I, I woke up early, so I walked over. Yeah, and yeah, played yeah. Because we were passed out. playing D&D or whatever yeah. the night before. And I you know, played SSX for a bit and was like, whatever. And I turned it off and went and played Power Stone, which is like one of my favorite Dreamcast. Yeah, and, and you know you have games like Power Stone. What the hell was Power Stone? No. Why? Why? There's a Power Stone collection that you can buy right now and to play on your Vita or PSP. But I want to play... Power Stone, do no But I, but I want to play Power Stone on my PS4. I want to play Power Stone with other people. I want to play Power Stone. way to play Power Stone. <laughs> yeah, play Power Stone versus Everyone AI. always says, like, oh, Smash Brothers is so awesome. But I'm like, dude, play Power Stone. But Power Stone is really good, right? Like, it, Smash Brothers is, is, is pretty neat for what it is, right? Like, it's a, it's a 2D fighter. You have... You know, I, basically, I like Smash Brothers. Power Stone is someone at Capcom playing Smash Brothers and go, "Yeah, I can do that better." Yeah, and was, they did. The maps were I like they were an isometric map, and you had multiple levels. You could, um, you know, you, the, get, you the, could knock the people off that, of them. Yeah, the but, stuff that you would actually get, like the rocket launchers and stuff, were actually fun to use. But not yeah. horribly overpowered. No. Like, um, the rocket launcher, you might get a single kill, but it only had three shots. Yeah. Or you something like that. You could tear... My favorite part was you, there was a level where you could tear a support beam out of the wall. And then the... the and, and the wall would fall, and then you would be running around swinging the support beam that yeah, took up, or, like, three quarters of the level. Yeah, or the... And once you got, like, all the power stones, they kind of, like, juiced up your character yeah, you, for... My like, favorite guy turns into, a, like, a transformer, a robot jet robot guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Does rocket launcher attacks. Yeah. And, you know, that, that game... That was probably one of... That was the Smash Brothers of the Dreamcast. Yes. Too bad it wasn't enough to save the Dreamcast. And it was a Capcom game, right? Okay, so, game. you know, so Capcom... It controlled tight, ran really well. Yeah, it was uh, fantastic. The Dreamcast is so easy to develop for because it's based off of Sega's arcade technology yes. at the time. So, like, a lot of the games that you could make, you could just say, like, Capcom would say, oh, we're making, you know, we're gonna Capcom have... versus Marvel's Capcom 2, and we're just going to do the port from our arcade stuff to Sega's arcade stuff, which are very similar. Yeah. Which is why that port still runs the best. Yes, the Marvel... Even compared to the HD remaster, still the best. Yeah. And they're always going to take you for a ride. Gonna take you for a ride. Anyway. Um, <laughs> gonna take you for a ride. I just had to go. Uh, <laughs> and, and, you know, other games like NFL Blitz. Blitz I do... Was, Blitz... Uh, NFL I, Blitz, like, like that, was the, that was the best version of yes. that game. I don't have Madden. I don't have um, any any Madden thing. But I do have football. NFL. I don't have 2K football. I do have Blitz. I do love Blitz. I do have Owen Dreamcast. I do play it. Blitz is, Blitz is probably... And it, and it was, with four controllers, it was exactly like playing the arcade yes. game. Like, this was, this was the best arcade port machine on the planet. Yes. Like, the problem was it was coming at the end of the arcade era. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was, and and but wasn't there was a virtual on for the yes virtual on Terra Tiger? I have it. Mm -hmm. I mean, granted, when you're playing virtual on in the arcade cabinet, you're sitting in the sitting big chair, in the chair and you got your two sticks. joysticks, and you're doing this, and you tank controls and things like that. And it was a lot of fun, but I could see how you would want to put that on the Dreamcast because it would run well. Yep. Um, you know, and and, and it would it, the load times were not atrocious like they were on the PS One or even on some early PS Two games. Yes. Like, the load times were very, very quick. Very, fairly snappy. Fairly snappy. Um, the the one thing I do like, want to say, I do have a Dreamcast back there. Mm -hmm. uh, they do, they're do. they very loud when they're running. They are not quiet. Because they don't have a DVD drive. They basically have a CD drive that spins at, like, 64 times the speed or something. Yeah. I don't know if it's that fast, but, yeah, it's pretty fast. But, basically, you turn it on, you hear... Oh yeah, yeah. It's, it's you, you, you that, have and if your v, and to complement that sound, if your VMU is out of battery, it, it chirps. goes beep 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 beep. It, it chirps at you, so it makes a lot of noise. Um, but I think uh, what we can do, Dave, is is we'll just go through Andy's pile of, of uh, Dreamcast games and take my my stack. That is a stack. So we're gonna lead off here with my favorite, best reason to own the Dreamcast. I don't have it. I didn't. You don't have a case for it. When I bought my Dreamcast, I bought it at a closeout sale, and this guy had. Okay. And this guy had a uh, Soul Caliber, and I was like, "Well, it doesn't have the case." And he was like, "Well, it's Soul Caliber, so how about twenty bucks?" I was like, "Yeah, but it doesn't have the case." And I so I, I went back. I got some other games instead, 
I came up and he was like, "It's a." He's like, "I gotta close the store, man." He's like, "What about? Will you do ten? And I was like, "It doesn't have the case." I was like, "Does it run?" So we actually fired up the Dreamcast that I was buying in the store yeah. on the TV, me and him, and played Soul Calibur. And I was like, "Okay, I'll do Soul Calibur for ten bucks." Yeah. So Soul Calibur, like arcade perfect. This looks better than Soul Calibur three, than Soul Cal and Soul Calibur two on both the Xbox 360 and, and the PS2. Yeah. This is if you like Soul Calibur, this is the version to get. Well worth the thirty dollars I paid. I paid twenty dollars for the system and ten dollars for this. Well worth it. Yeah. Oh, that's right. You told me about all that. So do you want to trade off? Do you want to go uh, to the list here? Well, there's a whole bunch of games in here that I've never played, to be honest. Okay. So I mean, the, uh, actually, the good thing about being a Dreamcast gamer in the current age is that Dreamcast games are a favorite of thrift stores because people, you know, pa people will sell games to pawn shops, but pawn shops won't buy Dreamcast games. Because thrift they can't will, sell them. Yeah, so thrift stores will take these. So I've gotten so many of these from thrift stores. Yeah, I haven't found any at the thrift But then again, the thrift stores up by where I live aren't as, aren't okay. in, so as good as... you have a handful? Is. Yeah, I do. Um, so Crazy Taxi. This was another one I bought day of. I love Crazy Taxi. Crazy Taxi was one of the games that everybody in my house played. Oh. So at one point, we had... If I see their arcades now, I'd stop and play it. You, you, you throw it... You know, forty-five. Yeah. Hey, 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 that's some crazy taxi. Yeah. Um, not so much crazy taxi too. And that that two looping. Uh, uh, there's an Offspring song and a Bad Religion song that just loop constantly. Yeah, because those are the two songs. Crazy taxi. You're not meant to play for a long time. Like the no, rounds no, no. are very short. Yeah, you're you're playing like two three minutes at most. But also, so, there's a Simpsons version of Crazy Taxi that's very good. Uh, Simpsons Road Rage. Yeah, I almost bought that when I was at my thrift store, but um, it didn't happen. It was just the box. Somebody oh. swiped the disc. Um, yeah, anyway, if you have a GameCube, so, go get the two Simpsons games for the GameCube. So, Crazy Taxi was, like I said, one of those games that we everybody played. We actually had, in our living room, mm -hmm. where the big TV was, we had a force feedback wheel mm -hmm. and this, this, this stuff, and we would all take turns, like, playing Crazy Taxi, trying to beat each other's scores on, like, the, the open world no, mode. Where you, all the video game stuff I have, you don't have a wheel and pedals. I don't have a wheel and pedals. <laughs> but it's it's hard to play that. Eight game. light guns. <laughs> we do have eight light guns. So if the zombie apocalypse happens, I'm going to go. As long as, they're, as long as they're UV reactive. Um, <laughs> you know, it, it was one of those... It was, it was, that was just the game that we played. Like, that was for, like, five months. That's what we did. And we, you know, we had it... It was one of those good, like, race wheels, too. Mm -hmm. It was like it had the... Not only did it have a little suction cuts on it, it also had, like, the clamps so that you can clamp it down to the table so that it didn't move too much. And yeah, that was that was the best. And and you know, there's a PS2 version of this game. It does not run as good. It does not run as good. Right. Like I actually have the PS2 version. Of this go game. go do your other two, and then I will hand you this stack. And then so you do those two. Okay. I'll hand you this stack, and I'll talk about the stuff in that stack that you didn't talk about. So go. Okay. Uh, Choo Choo Rocket, puzzle game. Awesome. Um, it was a very fast paced little puzzle game, and it's, you know, there's not a lot of depth. There's not a lot of depth to it, seemingly, like mm -hmm. when you first get it. But then it's like it's all about like. It's like Lemmings yep. at 100%, at like 100x when, speed. When I, I bought that game because when I rented a Dreamcast back in the day, when video game stores would still let you rent systems, Yes. Uh, I rented Choo Choo Rocket because I asked the guy, I want a game that I can play online. That and yeah, you easy. can play online. And with that people. was the first, uh, Choo Choo Rocket was the first game I played online against other people on a console. Wow. I can't even remember the first game I played online with other people. Oh, no, I tried I remember it because it was such a big thing for me as a kid. Yeah, no, no, that's as totally a kid, a thing. in air quotes, I think it was a sophomore in high school. Well, yeah, but, I mean, still, we're talking about the first the first game system that you could actually put online and play other people that wasn't yes. a PC. So, so another great arcade conversion there. Uh, yeah, uh, Hydro Thunder. Love that game. Um, I love that game in the arcade. Big, the minute I saw it on the Dreamcast, I figured Big speedboats going really, really fast. I believe the... Uh, Guess how much I bought that for? I would say probably less than $2. I bought that and NFL Blitz for a dollar. For a dollar. <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. Oh, yeah. Um, but, yeah, no, Hydro Thunder, like, I still see the arcade games mm -hmm. around. Like, oh, yeah, they're still popular. Like, if you go to Dave & Buster's, every Dave & Buster's will have either Crazy Taxi or, or Hydro Hy Thunder. Or both. Yeah. Um, I think the movie theater, one of the big movie theaters by us has a Hydro Thunder. Mm -hmm. And it's, like, tiny That little flashing light. light on the controller, it's, like, thruster. Yeah, and then you hit your, your turbo button and, and just go. Oh. Um, it, you know, it wasn't as, it wasn't, I, for whatever reason, I don't find this as fun as Wave Race was for the N64. Way more fun than Wave Race. Well, with Wave Race, you could do, like, all the tricks and stuff. This one, you couldn't. You couldn't necessarily yeah, do, like... Yeah, when you go off the ramps, you got to do the turn, you do the flips, and you go back over the rolls. 
Well, yeah, but well, anyway. <laughs> so yeah. So here we go. But yeah, so no, no. I, I enjoyed. I enjoyed Hydro Thunder a lot on my Dreamcast. So I'm gonna take those three. Take those three. We'll put these over here. Those are the ones we've already talked about. And I'm gonna give you these, and I'm gonna talk about the ones that he didn't talk about. Um, well, there's a lot in there. So um, there are games I wanted to play but never got around. Evolution to. Two is a, a roguelike, procedurally that. generated, um, kind of a dungeon crawler game. Mm -hmm. uh, the cool thing about this is that this is actually the most expensive game, uh, Dreamcast game I bought at ten dollars on sale. Mm -hmm. uh, so that gives you an idea how cheap these things are nowadays. So this is very good. If you like that type of game, pick this up. Well, we've already talked about like five games in this pile. Um, <laughs> eighteen wheel, eighteen wheeler pro, pro trucker. If you like crazy taxi, you will love eighteen wheeler pro trucker. This thing is awesome. It has an awesome soundtrack. Too. Yeah. Um, Alone in the dark, the new nightmare. This is the last good Alone in the Dark game, and it was a, it's actually a pretty good, um, Resident Evil replacement. This like, is very fun. Like because was it no Code Veronica X came Code out. Code Veronica I don't have it on my Dreamcast. Yeah, you don't. You don't. And it was Code Veronica. Code Veronica X, X came, came out on the PS2. PS2. Yeah. Um. So anyway, so this is and you know especially since we're getting into fall. You want to play something scary? This is actually pretty scary. Yeah. Uh, Evil Dead. Uh, Hail to the King, baby. I'm a big Evil Dead fan. Mm -hmm. uh, this was only. Uh, Wasn't it a platformer, like a third person platformer? No, this is a Resident Evil style game, and this was five bucks. Oh, okay. And it's very fun. And if you like Resident Evil style games or you like Evil Dead, this has a lot of that stuff in it. Grandia 2. Um, I think this is actually missing the soundtrack bonus. No, oh. man, with the soundtrack. I thought it was missing the soundtrack bonus. Yeah. Grandia 2, awesome RPG. Um, basically, uh, Game Arts, uh, who also did Lunar, Sega had basically rested all their hopes for an RPG for the Dreamcast on Game Arts, and they totally deliver. Um, the only problem is by the time this came out, the PlayStation 2 was already out, and people were already talking about the next Final Fantasy and how it yeah. wouldn't be on the Dreamcast. But Sad this dude. was uh, 10 bucks, 7 bucks ish Yeah. And how could you not talk about Jet Grind Radio? Because I never played it when I had it. Oh, oh wait, no, actually, I take that back. Game. I did play it when I had it. I had the, I had one of the demo discs that came with it, and that were like, was you remember like you could buy Dreamcast magazine, yes. and it would come with a Dreamcast disc. Yes. And have Before the them. internet, we had to download the demos. We had to get demos out of the magazines, which you could still do. I think. I think they still sell. Maybe not. Maybe not. So uh, the European ones definitely do. I buy a couple yeah. of European magazines. They always have them in them. So but those are regional. Jet Grind Radio is super fun. I love this. There's a PS Vita version of it. If you want to try Jet Grind Radio right now, there's a PS Vita and PS3 version of it. Yeah. Definitely go buy that. This is super fun. Um, the sequel to this, Jet Grind Radio Future. Yeah. Actually, Jet Set Radio Future. Oh, yeah. This was Jet Grind Radio in the States, Jet Set Radio in Japan. Yeah. Um, this was that Jet Grind, Jet Set Radio Future mm -hmm. was one of the three games that I bought an Xbox, original Xbox for. And right. I picked it up almost immediately. So, you have more. Go. Um, so, I actually don't remember a lot of Space Channel 5, because I didn't play it very Ooh much. La la. Wasn't it, 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 if I remember correctly, though, it was a... It's a rhythm game. It's a rhythm game. It's yeah. like the progenitor of, of current rhythm games, yes. right? Like, it's what, prior to, like, Guitar Hero and DDR and things like that, you kind of have this kind of game at home. I think there's a DDR map you can't put that on. Yeah, and it seems like, I don't know, I just... I, it struck me as one of those games. I was like, I don't understand the point of this game. Yeah, but that's, that's so because weird. that's because there's a lot of weird I mean, games on the Dreamcast. Out of out of the games we've already talked about, Blitz, Power Stone, uh, Virtual On, and Sonic Adventure. Yeah, Blitz and Power Stone were both not Sonic, ball. not Sonic Adventure Two, which was not that good. Yeah, Sonic Adventure Two is really not um, the best. So I have, a, I have a bootleg version of it somewhere. So, uh, here's another one of those games that you could play online, uh, Unreal Tournament. Oh, uh, well a, a very, a very, not the, no, I'm, I'm going to say right now, it's not the best version of this, depending on whether or not you had a decent gaming PC. Yes. In but year for, as a console game, for a there's console also shooter. Unreal Tournament on, there was Unreal Championship on the Xbox. And then there was Unreal Tournament, Tournament on, on the PS2. PS2. That was the best version. This was the better Except version the, of the original. The only reason, like, I would kind of, if you if you if you had it now and you have a Dreamcast, you have an X, original Xbox. I would say the Xbox One Unreal Championship has extra guns and extra maps. And I think it That's has. Really I difference. think it actually has a single player campaign too. Oh, ooh, okay. I think it does. Um, but yeah, like this Definitely was. I, like this I, I was a big a UT player back in the day. Like I, I loved playing Unreal Tournament, and the fact that I could then play it on the console and we could play it on the big TV in the living room. Um, you know, just multi kill. Yeah, and it, it kind of clinched it for me. And and you could still do the character customization where you like choose your your, your you know, the base skin and change the head and yeah. whatever. 
didn't have any effect on the gameplay, but it was a lot of fun. Um, and then the, the game that everybody talks about, that, Shenmue, that, that's never, ever, 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 ever coming out ever again because no! nobody believes Shinmu is worth selling. Um, and it's and it's brother Shinmu too. Uh, but yeah, no, I, I had the original, I had Shinmu when I bought it because I was like, oh man, this is going to be awesome. It was like four discs or something, right? Uh, is it three or four? I believe it's four. I think it's four. I uh, I only got ever got to like the third second or third disc. I never actually completed Shinmu, but it was really weird because it was one of those first. It was the first game that I had ever three discs with the passport. The passport was unlockable stuff if you went online. Oh okay, um, but it was one of those weird games where it's like it's the first game that you could ever like actually feel like you were walking around in a yeah, world. Yeah, in the world before Grand Theft Auto, this was the best open world world game. Well, before GTA three. Yeah, because GTA, GTA was a top like the first two were top down. Like, even so. now, like, Shinmu offers a level of interaction with mm -hmm. the world that it was just never... Like, you can just walk into random people's houses and open their cupboards and pull out fruit. Yeah. Look at fruit. And, like, never do anything with it, but hey, fruit. Yeah, yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's not like Skyrim where you can steal everything and then yes. it and whatever. But, um, we, and yeah, yeah like, Shinmu like was... And, and you could always play, like, uh, like, you could just... You had to, like, get a job and make money so yes. that you could do stuff, but... I was wasting my money in the arcade because you yep. would play for like, you know, hang on. 50 yen or, or 100 yen or whatever. You could play Hang On or, or Space Harry. Or... Shenmue 2 was one of the other games I bought the original Xbox for because I was like, I must have Shenmue 2. Yeah. Because I played Shenmue 1. I love Shenmue 1. I'll probably. It was supposed to be like a five part thing, right? 11. Yes. <laughs> wow. Yu, Yu Suzuki? Not. The, the genius from Sega? Genius thinking, thinking way ahead. Afterburner, other things like, yes, an eleven part. I mean, yes. we're not even. I guess. So Shenmue Two came out on the Dreamcast in Europe, and I had an option to buy Shenmue Two at one time, but I didn't, and I continually kick myself in the butt for that. But are you talking about the one at half price books that only had one disc? Only had one disc, and I was like, but I could have burnt other discs and put them in the case. That's the problem with the Dreamcast. I believe that's yes. part of the reason why the Dreamcast wasn't that. I mean, I, I wouldn't say that's the reason why it died, because... It was it was technology. already dead at that yeah. point. But Portable technology and getting those ISOs over the broadband internet wasn't really there yet. But the good news is, if you like Shenmue, back on topic, if you like Shenmue, uh, and you the, do series, own a Dreamcast. the series lives on in the Yakuza series. So buy those games. So, okay, so we're going to talk about Unreal Tournament, Space mm -hmm. Channel 5. Pick those out. Okay, so here we got Plasma Sword. Plasma Sword's awesome. This was a $7 game. Um, Plasma Sword it was Capcom's kind of best foray into 3D fighting. So this is kind of if Tekken met Street Fighter. Yeah. Um, before Street Fighter cross Tekken. Yeah. Which um, that... It's actually really fun and kind of cool. And that one guy with the blue laser sword and, and Marvel's to Capcom He's that a... no one ever knows what game he came from. He came from this one. He came game. from this one. Rip and Riders, uh, since Sega didn't have the SSX series. They came up with their own snowboard series. They had their own snowboard series. It's actually kind of fun. Uh, this was a dollar game from a Goodwill. Yeah, well, you know. Samba de Amigo. Everyone needs a little Samba de Amigo. $2. You, you have your maracas. I do not have the maraca set. And it's actually still playable without the maraca set, surprisingly. But very fun. There's a Wii version of this game. I highly recommend it. It's one of the few games I recommend on the Wii. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking to see if you have it. I bet you will. The Sword of the Berserk, Guts Rage. Mm -hmm. um, have you ever heard of the Berserk series? Uh, yes. Berserk is like a 30-year-old manga still going in Japan. I think you've talked about it um, recently, yes. It sounds familiar. I think I showed you that movie. Yeah. Um, basically, it's Game of Thrones before Game of Thrones. It's kind of like the anime version of Game of Thrones. M minus all Very the... dark, very evil. This is kind of an action... Reminds me a lot of Dino Crisis, mm -hmm. um, kind of like an actiony blueprint for what would become Resident Evil Four. Mm -hmm. um, and you swing your giant sword around and cut people up in demons, save a small town. Yeah, very fun. And you already talked about those. And that. where's Rick the Wonder Sword? Oh, it's right here. <laughs> I, was like, I, I pulled it out. And there was a lot of RPGs on the Dreamcast. You know, we talked about Grandia. We just talked about Guts Rage, which is actually more of an action game. But Record of Lotus War is a Diablo Light game um, for you Record of Lotus War fans out there on our page. Uh, this game actually stars em a resurrected Emperor Beld. He comes back after the slain of Cardus mm -hmm. because now Cardus is going to try and resurrect herself again. Yeah. So Beld has to go and save Marmo from Cardus. This is actually a very fun game, very cool. 
Uh, actually, now I think about it, this sticker price is probably the most expensive Dreamcast game I have, um, but I got it on sale. And it's so like it twenty bucks. Sticker price was uh, like thirty, mm -hmm. but I got it. I had a half off coupon, mm -hmm. and then I had another coupon on top of that. I've I've, 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 I've heard content. mixed things about this. Um, to be honest. Oh crap. Are we breaking my disc? I am not breaking the disc. I think the, the, the they for the Western release when they did the game they went with CG animated cutscenes and said they originally wanted to go with the hand animated cutscenes. Yeah, but yeah, because at, right. at that time they were doing the Retro Lotus War TV series. Yeah. They wanted to bring them in. They couldn't get the budget to it, so they did CG animated cutscenes. Yeah, which, eh. nah. But no, that's very fun. That's actually really fun. That's cool. I, if I, you want a Dreamcast game to play and sink hours and hours mm -hmm. into, that's the one. And it looks like, well, I it's mean, they, they have everybody on here, right? Like, yes. of course, they have Deed and Parn. And Deed and Parn and show up, and so does Vogner, the evil wizard. Yeah. Everybody cool. shows up. All resurrected. And then, we talked about it earlier, Skies of Arcadia. I love this game. I love it so much. This one was at, I found this at a half press books the week after Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, and as you can tell, there's water damage to the manual. Uh, but they wanted $40 for it. And I had coupons, and one of them, one of my coupons was like was anything in the off. store, anything in the store like seventy five percent off. Oh, sh so I was like, bam, ten bucks of Arcadia, buying this so much. This is the probably the best usage of the BMU. Mm -hmm. Way better than that Chow raising game. Well, no, it, it was the Chow game was whatever. I mean, and like if you want to talk about the BMU usage, like there's a for Blitz. Like, oh, yeah, you can do your little thing. There's there's a little, yeah, like there's a way to make it so that they can't, you know, the person you're the playing person you're against, playing against can't, can't see, see the player. cursor. It's only on, on the thing. VMU, so you choose the one that you want, and then they can't. Yes, they very can't. cool, very cool. It was it was a lot of fun. I, I miss, What's I don't. The, we'll also show one of the reasons, because we talked about the bootlegging. Yeah, Andy's big binder of boot bootlegged. Uh, Bootleg's Dreamcast. Bootleg games. Dreamcast games. Um, now the the problem that we had that I had heard about because I've never actually I never played a bootleg Dreamcast game. Um, I have a bootleg Game Boy emulator for my Dreamcast. So you can play all those Game Boy games on it too. And of course, they all system. fit. They all fit like on a single on a disc. disc. Half Life, which was going to be released, yeah, was released in the European market. Never released here because the Dreamcast died before. But the King of Fighters ninety nine and the Half Life two or the Half Life one that they released is that. That's the one that had the special co-op missions in it, right? Where yes. You played as the they two ported female signs. They eventually ported it for the PS2. Yeah, that's the one I played. Okay. And Sonic Adventure Two. Gunbird. Gunbird is awesome. Mm -hmm. That was a that was a shmup. Mars. Ooh, Mars Mars Matrix. Oh, shmup. I thought you said Mars Attacks. I'm like, yeah. Bang IO. Shmup. Kind of a shmup. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Driller. Best version of Mr. Driller. Mr. Driller. Mr. Driller. Yeah. I love Mr. Uh, Driller. Mr. Driller was a really fun game. Uh, Bomberman Online and uh, Power Stone Two. Power Stone 2. Because you can't find Power Stone 2 anywhere, ever. So we should probably wrap this up. Probably. So, say la vie, Dreamcast. We love you. If you're out there and you see a Dreamcast and it's 10, 20, 30 bucks, buy it. Buy it. we'll be able to get a good Dreamcast library for less than 30 bucks. The only problem with the Dreamcast is I think there's an issue with, like, a battery inside of it. No. Does, what no. are you talking about? There's an issue. The There's an issue with the, the hardware plugs, itself. Yeah, the plugs that you plug in your controller into, those plugs aren't seated securely enough on the board, so people can shove them in and break that. Mm -hmm. You can resolder it very you easily. You just have to open it up. You have to open it up. That's the only problem. Okay. Dreamcasts are built like tanks, kind of. It's like an N64. See you next week! I need to take a whiz. <laughs> yeah, totally.